Have you ever been in a situation as a designer where you have contrast issues? Maybe you're putting type on top of a picture or an icon that needs to be you know, used and easily visible and you just can't figure out how to increase that contrast. Well, I'm gonna show you a really cool way. It's sort of like glass morphism, but not really. Uh, in order to increase contrast while still using a background that doesn't really contrast well. And that is called like the blur technique or the blur method. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that in this video. So as always, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Now just wait one moment. If you're interested in this video, then you might be interested in my UI design bootcamp at scrimba.com. At Scrimba, you don't just watch videos. No, no, no. You're actually able to modify code in the browser while you learn. My course on UI design features over 100 lessons that are specifically tailored to help you become an awesome UI designer, and they're packed with interactive challenges. So make sure to click on the very top link here in the YouTube description to get access to my bootcamp along with many other courses for a very low monthly fee. All right, so here is the very first example we're gonna take a look at, and it's kind of like a half finished um, you know, mobile navigation of, or mobile uh, app of some sort. And so, Right down here is our focus. We can see we have kind of like a tap bar with icons and we can see in the photograph itself, in the background basically, which it doesn't have to be a, pho a photograph, it could be anything that's behind your elements of concern. Um, it's just not enough contrast. Uh, there's a lot of white in the photograph itself in this water and then we have the white icons on top. So we need to figure out a way in which we can increase the contrast. So I'll cover a few ways uh, in, in techniques and we'll get ultimately to this particular technique, the purpose of this tutorial, which is the blur method. So one thing you could do, uh, you could always experiment with changing the foreground elements themselves, like the colors, like for instance, maybe black will help it stick out still not good enough because there are some pretty dark spots as well, right? All right, uh, another thing you could do is just opt to take the photograph itself. Let me make sure I select the right element and maybe I, did I actually adjust the, nope. So the, the background itself, we don't have a background on this element. Let me click on here and we can give this a fill and then maybe we'll make it black. I mean, so something like this is an option, but let's say for instance, just for the purposes of the tutorial, we really wanna make this, uh, we really wanna utilize like a full photograph based background. So I'm gonna back up a couple times and there we go. All right, so what can we do then uh, if we're not gonna use these conventional approaches in order to increase the contrast that's occurring here? All right, so the first thing is if we just add a blur onto this, it's still not gonna be enough but I'll show you what that looks like. So here in Figma, what we can do to add a blur is we can create, uh, we'll use a rectangle because that's all we need for this. All right, and we're going to position this just above this layer right here, the photograph base layer. And then we're going to uh, leave the color as it is right now, but we're gonna add an effect and we're gonna change it to background blur. Now, nothing's gonna happen, um, but we do need a fill and you'll see the blur occur based on the opacity that we add here. Um, if we click this icon, we can change the settings to increase the blur amount, however we wish. All right, so if we change this gray here to like black, it's gonna make it darker. If we make it white, it's gonna make it lighter. Um, and I personally kind of just don't really like the cutoff. Now, as you can see, just adding that alone like if we toggle this on and off, we, the visibility, it certainly has helped increase the contrast. Now, I personally don't like how it just kind of ends at a line. So what we can do is we can change here and change this to linear. We click on linear here. Uh, we can change this so at the top, um, it kind of fades the blur. All right, so to, take, to do that, we want to take this color picker right here. And what we'll do is change this opacity down just like right around 4%. And then that way we create kind of like this gradient of the blur itself. All right, so I think I like that. And looking at the colors, we have both uh, black selected here, but there's still not quite enough contrast for my liking. So we have to figure out a way to darken this section here. So what I'll do is I'll take this rectangle too, which is a blur layer. In fact, we can just double click that, we'll call that blur. We'll go ahead and duplicate this, we'll call this darken. And now we're gonna get rid of the background um, blur right here. And then we're going to also change this. Uh, we'll keep this at linear. Um, and at the top, 
We'll leave that at black and it's at 0% opacity. And at the bottom, uh, we're gonna make sure, let's see if I have any other color pickers occurring here. There we go. We'll change this and increase all the way to 100% opacity. And we could also probably move this up a bit. And then ultimately we can increase this area right around here. So it makes the, it increases the contrast significantly. Um, and then that way, if we can kind of toggle these off, you can show, show the difference. So this is with the layer blur only, but this is also here with the actual icons in front. And if you wish, you know, if you want to make some adjustments, like for instance, I kind of see, I would rather this blur maybe come up a little bit higher. And then you can take the darken layer up and kind of increase that as well, if you wish. And there you go. Let's check it, take a look at the next um, example right here. So this example, we can see we have this photograph here um, and it's there's a lot of stuff happening in it. it. It's not obviously like a very simple photograph. It's a, it's a flower. And then we have type sitting on top of it. And there's just not enough contrast here. This, you know, especially the description is gonna be difficult for people to read uh, if you left it as is. So this is where the glass morphism sort of comes into play because you can use your blend, your, uh, your, your, your background blurs in order to increase the contrast. So let's take a rectangle and we're gonna put it down here just above this uh, photograph layer. Let's give ourselves a little bit of rounded corners. All right, and let's go ahead and add our background blur. So once again, background blur. In order for that to work, we'll have to drag this down quite a bit, but also increase our blur radius from four to something that's higher. Now this right here, very poor contrast itself because we use the default color right here. So what we can do is we could just grab this background color right here and then decrease once again the blur and maybe increase the size of this just slightly. But I personally think it would be pretty cool looking if uh, we could also see this extend out into this area. So the way you would do that is we already have this color right here selected. We're just going to add a uh, tint, which is just to lighten it. So it's very subtle right there. That's all. That's all you should strive for. You don't want anything that's really high contrast with this, this background portion here. So if I take this and we hide it, we could see it's much easier now to read the type that's sitting on it, top of it, especially in this area right here where we have the light areas of the, the flower petal. If we turn that back on, it's much easier to read this. So now it just becomes a matter of let me just delete these. Duplicate this here. And there we go. Look at that. And then we could probably increase the this uh, the blur radius a little bit more. It's only at 15. And there we go. Awesome. Awesome stuff. All right, hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, make sure to subscribe. Check out designcourse.com, which if you're watching this, the time of the release, it's, uh, the pre-launch is here at September 14th. Definitely go to designcourse.com, enter your email to be notified when that happens. I'll see you all soon, goodbye.